Hi, you're joining us here in complicated conditions at Cadwell Park. This is the final round of the Thundersport GB Championship 2016. Welcome to Cadwell Park. It's the GB Racing 600 Sportsman Elite Championship, the deciding round. And as we come into this, Charlie Morris, who was fourth yesterday, is uh, 26 points up on that man there. You just saw Jordan Rushby. 26 points up with 50 available. A couple of names to throw into the mix here. Jordan Rushby finished second yesterday, but Lloyd Shelley comes over, the sportsman Sorry, the pre-national sport champion of last year. There is Charlie Morris. He has the number one on his uh, machine, of course, because he's the sportsman champion of 2016. So he has a job to do here. The lights go out. And in these conditions, as you know, anything can happen. Jordan Rushby, what we do know, needs a really good day at the office here if he's to be crowned champion. Here's former Thundersport 500 rider Jack Tynan on his 600. We just see here just how bad these conditions are as they make their way around Charlie's. A few familiar names here in this class that you might not have seen in it already before. As of course we get to the end of 2016, 17, there should be bigger and better. But this year it's all been about consistency. There's Joe Thompson. A few of you as well might remember Joe, ex super team rider, of course. He then went into. Uh, Moto3 class at British Championship level. He's now out there on a 600. Joe was with us back in the Super Teens a couple of seasons ago. And he leads this race, number 74, ahead of Charlie Morris and Jordan Rushby. Then it's Lloyd Shelley and William White, who's third in the championship. A bit further back there is Jack Tynan. Steve here in the commentary booth alongside Sid. Sid, uh, as we watch a few moves going on in these conditions. Charlie Morris, the sportsman champion, 26 point lead. Uh, he knows that if he finishes ahead of Jordan Rushby in this race, there's a few other permutations to throw in there as well, that he has this championship in the bag. But so far, on the final day of the proceedings here at Cadwell Park, we have seen a few twists and turns, so nothing, have. nothing is secure. No, exactly. And I think the startling thing is uh, with, with Charlie is the fact that he's actually only one one race outright, which was at the first round of Brands Hatch. Um, the rest is pure consistency because everybody else has decided to fling their bikes at the scenery or they've broken down or something's gone wrong. So it just goes to show you that finishing is the key. And I think Charlie, I think I'm right in saying anyway, uh, that Charlie's uh, only DNF once. I, I'm pretty sure that is the case. Yeah, and, and over an entire season, that really does make up for quite a lot of points. It has to be said, there have been a number of riders throwing bikes in the scenery there. As we see, Morris losing a place or two. Jordan Rushby, his title rival, is just up ahead of him. Charlie Morris knows that the worst case scenario, even if he follows Jordan Rushby home in this race, that Rushby's going to have quite a lot to do in the second race this afternoon. Lloyd Shelley, of course, number 119, comes into this, not really giving two hoots what goes on in terms of the championship. Lloyd Shelley, nicknamed the Terrier from Sid, uh, has already won his championship for the year. He just wants to throw a massive spanner in the works and get another trophy. So he's yeah, up not content second. with coming in as a sportsman rider in the uh, sportsman elite class. He wants to go and win the elite bit as well. Yeah, <laughs> he's already leading the sportsman bit here. He's up ahead of Charlie Morris. He's trying to hunt down Joe Thompson. So uh, we'll see how that one. Perhaps he'll change his name to Terrier Racing for next year, eh? Well, you never know. He might be looking for some sponsorship and he might well get it based on the performances we've seen recently. Further down through the order, nice to see James Cowton back with us. He's sporting the number 52. There you can see number 20, Ben Neary. Nice to see Ben out there as well. It's been a while since we've seen Ben racing with us, actually. 129. Jeff Booth. We've got Jonathan Perry out there as well, number 24, of course, for the Thundersport 500 and Super Twin Rider. As we see here, the two men 
side by side going into turn one or it's getting a bit tight there between numbers one and two at least they're easy to pick out the championship rivals with their numbers further back as well Arnie Shelton nice to see Arnie back out there with us as well familiar name in the paddock there's Sergei Kravchenko just inside the points William White we've mentioned before finishing in the top three of the championship gonna well, he might finish in the top three. It looks like he will, because Aaron Clifford's not racing. But, uh, yeah, Max Wadsworth as well. Looks like he's going to finish in the top five of the championship also. He'll be fifth, Max. Uh, he can't lose fifth, and he can't get any better here this weekend. Well, there you hear it from the horse's mouth. Sid might not be good at maths, but he knows when somebody is staying put. And that is the case. It's the first time he's jumped in to talk about points all season long. So, uh, <laughs> no abacus required for that one. Joe Thompson it is that That's leads. only because I interviewed him. <laughs> <laughs> Joe Thompson leads this one, but he's being kept honest by a rider who I can guarantee you he has never come across before. Uh, Joe Thompson has ridden against some of the best talent that's come up through the ranks. But he ain't come across a Lloyd Shelley before, that's for sure. He hasn't seen the Terrier. No, and the Terrier may well. Terrier past him. He'll grab hold of the bottom of his trouser leg and tear it to pieces. We have seen new <laughs> racing lines invented by Lloyd Shelley so far this year. Some of the most bizarre races. But ultimately, he has gone on to win the pre-national 600 ch championship and deservedly so now. He's hunting down his first Sportsman Elite win. I will just say, uh, yesterday, uh, because I know you weren't uh, privy to this, but there was a fantastic race uh, yesterday uh, that took place between Jordan Rushby and Joey Thompson, and it was particularly good. It's one of the best races that I've actually seen. They changed places to and fro. It was brilliant. Of course, Joe Thompson going on to win that race. Yeah. Ultimately, just ahead of Jordan Rushby. As we see here, a move from Jack Tynan. Jack uh, moving up a place at Park Corner and leaves himself with a bit of clear air. He's just gone through on a certain Jordan Rushby, no less. That won't please Mr. Rushby, all things considered. As it stands at the moment, Jordan Rushby's chances of winning this championship are going to be thrown away. It's fair to say that both, oh dear, Joe Thompson there has just been forced to go straight on. There goes Lloyd Shelley. Joe Thompson rejoins and now has a bit of work to do. The number 74, the rider from Selby on the bid vest, Thompson Kawasaki. Here he is then, 119, Lloyd Shelley on the access, accessbookings.com triumph. It's easy for me to say. Yeah, we've made that cut through a little bit more difficult than uh, it used to be, just to make sure that uh, there's no chance there. But not that you know uh, Joey would try and take advantage of that. He's you know he's much better than that. But uh, it just takes you that much longer to get to weave through that, so that you, you you're not going to come out with an advantage under any circs. So there, Joe Thompson just having a good look over his shoulder to find out what's going on further behind him. There is Charlie Morris up ahead of Jack Tynan. So, Charlie Morris at the moment is in the position he needs to be. We're on board with Jack Tynan in four. In truth, Charlie Morris, if he sees Jack Tynan's front wheel, I don't think he'll fight back. I mean, this is just the classic kind of example of what Charlie Morris has done all year. He's doing what he needs to do to win this championship. He's not doing anything too silly. Jack Tynan here will go through on him. I don't think you'll see Charlie Morris necessarily fighting back. Oh, what do I know? What do I know? What a load of rubbish. They're all racers and I'll go home and I'll shut up. Because Charlie Morris there, he doesn't even need to get involved there with Jack Tynan. Yeah. But he's decided, nah, actually, I fancy a podium if it's all right. But you know, him and his two teammates, um, there is two or three of them, aren't there? I think, I'm sure there is. Uh, they all, you know, they've chosen Suzuki, which is quite... Un unusual. Oh, for Jack Tynan. That could have gone horribly wrong there. But yeah, they are. It is an odd choice on a 600. For now, for the, you know, I mean, obviously Suzuki have had their time over the years, but they, you 
know, it, it's nice to see, uh, you know, Suzuki doing so well. On board again here then with Jack Tynan. I worry about this boy. Well, <laughs> this in these conditions particularly. The thing is, is that you, you worry for Charlie because Charlie's the one with the championship yeah, yeah. here to win. Jack Tynan doesn't really care what happens up ahead of him. Jack Tynan's just shown there what, on more than one occasion that he will kind of do anything to get up ahead of Charlie Morris. Morris doesn't need to, to finish ahead of Jack Tynan, but of course I would expect Jack, Charlie Morris wants to be on the podium. Yeah, I'm sure he does, particularly, uh, you know, if he ends up winning the championship. I mean, he'd love to be up on the podium, so if he can't be winner, he'd, li he'd like to be up there. I mean, you can see here, J Jack Tynan, you can just tell, can't you, from the way he's racing this machine. He's getting a bit impatient. Look, he's weaving all over the back. He's just going to, I mean, he's almost certainly going to have another nibble somewhere. They tip into Park Corner. Charlie Morris at the moment with the number one plate on. He's already sportsman champion. Will he now be elite champion as well? But Jack has become more and more comfortable with this with, with this uh, machine because he did he didn't seem to settle with the 450, did he? When he when he came off the uh, the, the CB 500, he didn't really I don't know. He didn't gel with that 450, RRV 450. Most of the lads do, but uh, showed glimpses, but. I mean, it does take time to, to make that transition. And as you said before, 500s to 600s, it's not always so easy. No. But Well, maybe the, you know, that has helped him, maybe. And, uh, but you just can't be fast on any... When you take a new machine, really, I mean, OK, some will go and snatch glory the very next year, but others, you really need to look at a year to say, right, OK, well, I'm going to learn this machine. Uh, and, and, and see what I can, you know, sort out. Because, uh, you know, if you put yourself under pressure to, to try and win straight away, you're not going to enjoy it, you know. And you, uh, generally, people do struggle. Just saw there James Captain on his Honda. This is the battle for third place in the race between Charlie Morris, number one, and Jack Tynan, number 96. Jack Tynan with no part to play in the championship. Charlie Morris just needs to stay upright and he will have his second title of the season. This is the man who leads overall, already a championship winner, just looking to really upset the entire field. The unique riding style of Lloyd Shelley. And now here comes Jack Tynan up the inside. No, Charlie Morris shuts the door. So for now, the MSG racing rider stays in third place. Around Chris Kerr we go, back on board with Jack Tynan. Will he have a look through the gooseneck? Or will he try and line it up now into Mansfield? Gets on the power early. He's not close enough for a move down into Mansfield on this occasion. The tip left. Now up towards the new chicane. Jack Tynan, he's got some speed going through there, but he's going to have to get that move pulled properly. Might just be feinting a move ready for later in the race. To the bottom of the mountain now. He's looking to find a way past. I think that much is uh, we're certain of, Sid. But, you know, uh, we see... Charlie's come very, very strong on the brakes, hasn't he? I mean, even in these conditions, he's very late. And uh, whereas Jack thinks he's going to, like, outbreak him, oh, he's not. He's oh, gone. my God. He's gone. Jack Tynan has gone straight into the barriers there. At times, I'm afraid he was looking a bit ragged here in this race. At times, he just wasn't looking quite as smooth when he was keeping on, when he was trying to get on terms with Charlie Morris. He had a flags out there at turn one, and Sid has got the commentary curse back again here at Cadwell Park. So, uh, Mr. Tynan and family, if you want someone to find, go and find Sid. Lloyd Shelley then leads this race and the pressure's kind of been relieved a bit. Joe Thompson is in second. Charlie Morris having a good look over his shoulder there. And believe it or not, he can see his title rival breaking, going into Hall uh, Park Corner. There he is, just up ahead of James Carrington. And Charlie Morris knows that if he stays where he is now, the championship is done. And it will be the sportsman... 600 championship and the GB Racing Elite Championship as well. 
the first year that the Sportsman Championship has been brought into the Elite. And he will be the champion. Lloyd Shelley showboating already. The pre-national 600 rider. Well, he's made it look pretty easy, in truth. The Triumph rider. Watch out the field of 2017 for this man, Lloyd Shelley. He might have a bit of a weird riding style at times, but he is fast. Check. Good flag will be out next lap. I'm getting carried away here. I thought it was the last lap already. I thought you were, Steve. Yeah, well, thanks for, for helping me out there, Sid. No, I thought I'd Throwing let you, me under let a you bus, roast. Why not? Yeah, I'll let you roast. Joe Thompson's still there in second place. He's just about to put a lap on Lewis Barnes. There is Charlie Morris. Denny. He is showboating. <laughs> Well, Charlie so Morris will be just them. praying to see the chequered flag now. There is Jordan Rushby going through and James Cowton. Then it's Jonathan Perry and Brendan Malander. And of course, one of the former pre-national 600 riders from last season. So now we can talk about Lloyd Shelley on his last lap. As he makes his way through, there's Joey Thompson. But it looks like even Lloyd, I mean, he's got that bike well set up as well. You know, if you watch him under braking, it looks as steady as a rock, that bike. And and it must be well set up. Look, I mean, he's got one... I mean, look at him, look. I mean, this is raining here. He's braking down into Man Mansfield. <laughs> one head. I mean, like, hello? Uh, I don't, yeah, I don't know what he's doing. I mean, he... He's, he's had the fastest lap of the race. He's been leading all race. But this is the thing with Lloyd. He is a little bit of a law unto himself. He's just a completely unique character, isn't he? He is. <laughs> like, he's, what he was saying there was, where is everyone? <laughs> yeah, I, 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 is this race still going on? Yeah. <laughs> Here he comes through Hall Bends. Well, hats off to Mr. Shelley. A champion of one class, he enters another, he wins it. Next year, the championship might just be going in the direction of this guy. Terrier who, racing. Who will stop him? <laughs> the Terrier, Lloyd Shelley, wins here at Cadwell Park. And at last, he sees the chequered flag. Here comes Joe Thompson. Bit of a mistake earlier, but in truth, I don't think his lap times, he might, I don't think he'd have been able to get on terms with Shelley there. And third place for Charlie Morris, number one. And he is the champion of 2016. He takes third, he wins it, ahead of Jordan Rushby, congratulations to him. James Catton takes fifth place, Jonathan Perry is sixth overall. Top three on the podium are Lloyd Shelley, Joe Thompson and Charlie Morris. And of course, winning the sportsman race as well. Lloyd Shelley, Charlie Morris, Brendan Mallon. Charlie Morris, uh, well, what can I say? Many, many, many congratulations. First of all, you win outright the Sportsman Championship, which is how you started this in this on this grid. And now you've gone and won overall the Elite as well. Well done. Yeah, um, I don't really know what to say. Well, just that uh, it's great. Yeah. <laughs> now look, how many people have helped you along the way? Um, not too many, mainly MSG. Um, my family give me some support, and friends. And that's about it, really. And what are your plans now for the future? I really don't know yet. Got, a, got all winter to think about that, so. You'll let us know then, yeah? Yeah, we'll do. Okay, well done, Charlie. Thank you. Joey, great to see you back here with us at Thundersport GB. Uh, I mean, cracking race yesterday with Jordan, really enjoyed that. But tricky out there today, eh? Yeah, the conditions were quite tricky today. I mean, the key was just to keep the heat in your tyres, ride smooth and stay on, and uh, that's what we did. Uh, I'm never usually too good in the wet, so I think we did quite a job, God, good job with the conditions. Yeah, and uh, you've got some people to thank, obviously. Yeah, I wouldn't be here without my dad, all that road and race and bid vest. Uh, they're my main sponsors, and just thanks for everyone for helping me out. I mean, Alex and Dan for helping me with the pit board, HJ, HJC helmets, all my friends, family, supporters. Thank you, everyone. Lloyd. Well, it's unbelievable. I mean, what are you like? I mean, you go and win your uh, your own championship, and then once you've got that, you come into Sportsman Elite, and then, boom, like win it outright. We like the rain, don't we? It was good, mate. Brilliant. Just got the feel again. 
But you were just like putting purple sectors in everywhere, you know, like just, I mean, they just had nothing for you, did they? I think they've got championships to look after, haven't they? Like, I think they had a lot more to risk than I did. A little wild, wild card ride. So, yeah, uh, just enjoyed it. And what are you, what are you going to do next year? Do you know yet? I'll probably be back here in the elites, yeah. I'm enjoying it. I like the, the, the racing standard like. It's, drags you along. I've gone quicker than I've ever have here yesterday in bad conditions, so. Well, you've certainly laid down the gauntlet and uh, given some people who are going to join it next year something to think about. Who have you got to thank? The usual boys, Access, access Bookings, uh, Trade Tyres, SSR Suspension, uh, Johnny Chambers, uh, Steve Randall, uh, everybody, APH Electrical, they're, they're all over the bike. I've normally got it here to look and just have a quick glance when I run out, but uh, now nah, everybody, you know who you are. Sorry I uh, always forget some of you, but appreciate it. Thank you very much. Well done, Lloyd. Thanks, Sid. Cheers. Great riding there from Lloyd Shelley. Can he do it again in race two? Find out in a few moments. Welcome back to part two. It's the GB Racing 600 Sportsman Elite and race two. High rate of attrition so far this weekend. Of course, a few riders have already got their jobs and business done. Here he is, the champion then, Charlie Morris. We started off this weekend with 28 riders on the grid for this race. Uh, we're down to 18 starting, so 10 uh, won't be making it to the grid here from the start of the weekend. There's Joe Thompson, of course, he'll be looking to get another win. Lloyd Shelley, we saw him earlier on. Uh, Part-time Sid will be with us in the commentary box at some point uh, during this race. Uh, but uh, he's a bit busy at this moment in time. Here we go then, ready for the start of race two. Away from the line we go, Jordan Rushby there, starting on pole position. Has just got some pride to ride for now. He's got second place, of course, wrapped up. He desperately wanted to try and win it. Here's Jack Tyne, and Jack was fighting, of course, for a top three place earlier on until he fell over at Barn Corner. He's already trying to make some headway. There's Jonathan Perry just up ahead of him. Sun sitting quite low there, just on the left of Charlie's as they make their way around. Still a wet circuit here. Blue skies, and it looks quite a nice day, doesn't it, until you see all this lot on the track surface. You know, breaking up into Park Corner. That's pretty late on the brakes there from Jack Tynan, but it's Joe Thompson, Jordan Rushby, and James Counter, your top three. So, uh, if it's all round there, Lloyd Shelley could be the man to look out for, the race one winner, the pre-national champion of l this season, who's come into this series with a bang. There he is, number 119, up ahead of the new champion, Charlie Morris. Further back there, Brandon Mallander. Jonathan Perry. Number 34 is Arnie Shelton. Number 46 is Ross Walker. The sun's setting nicely actually on Cadwell Park. It looks a real treat. The circuit under this light. It's almost like it's under floodlights. There is uh, Lloyd Shelley. Stop ahead of Charlie Morris and uh, Jack Tynan as they tip into the mountain. Who can end the year on a high? Joe Thompson at the moment looking pretty good there ahead of Jordan Rushby. There is Jack Tynan once more, number 96. He's coming up to Barn Corner, of course, where he crashed earlier on. So he's got the same rider right up ahead of him as well. William White is up there inside the top seven. Across the line we go to complete that lap bed. Joe Thompson with the advantage ahead of Jordan Rushby. Those two that had a big scrap here yesterday in the dry. Jack Tynan on the brakes, really late once more. Here he is on that Yamaha 
tipping it into turn one. Uphill, positive camber, Coppice Corner here at Cadwell, so you can scrub up a lot of speed, which is handy in the wet, if you feel like you might have just outbraked yourself slightly. Into Park Corner comes your race leader, Joe Thompson, just gradually stretching away from Jordan Rushby, James Catlin in the solid third. Lloyd Shelley here then, what can he do in this race? Now earlier on, in the wet, of course, he won the race with 142s. But at the moment, we've had a lot, of, a little bit more rainfall as well. And these guys are all lapping in, let's have a look, in the 46s. So they're four seconds slower than they were in race one. So maybe just a little bit more water down on the surface. Here is Joe Thompson. Up ahead of Rush Beat covered a bit in the second part of this lap. He's closed that gap down a bit. James Cowton, can he now feature as well? Number 52, the rider from Killam. That Honda CBR 600. Nice to see a Honda up there in the sharp end anyway. And of course the Triumph being ridden by Lloyd Shelley, just further behind. Big group of riders here all together. Number 88 there is uh, Richard Stubbs. 72, Max Wadsworth. A rider from Halifax on the specialised group Kawasaki. Onto the start for the straight once more. No change in the top four. Lloyd Shelley maybe just, just struggling to stay in touch actually with the leading trio, which I have to say is a bit of a surprise because the conditions aren't that different to what we had earlier. And lap times haven't exactly improved dramatically. But Joe Thompson obviously a good start, got the bit between his teeth. Feeling confident out front. On board now here with Jordan Rushby. Looking back at James Cowton, he just lost some traction there, didn't he? He made his way onto the back straight, and that's allowed Cowton through. So Jordan Rushby has been pushed back into third, but then on the brakes again, Jordan Rushby bounces back again. Rushby will be keen to end the year on a high, just to get himself on that podium after disappointingly losing out on the championship. We look back at Jordan Rushby again. Beautiful views here of the sky and James Cowton trying to push his way through, down through the goose neck and then into Mansfield and Jordan Rushby's got it all wrong and he's gone straight on at Mansfield. He's just outbraked himself I'm afraid and then he's tipped the bike down and uh, he's off and that's it and he's absolutely livid because the rules state that once you've done that, you're out of the race and Sid's here with me in the commentary box and Sid, I suppose that's the only time where even you, as a man that knows the rules well, would probably say, that's pretty hard luck. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that is pretty hard luck, that. Uh, and do you know, uh, as soon as he, I saw him run on there, how many times just there have we seen people turn it around, go onto the grass and then fall off? It's just really difficult there. Yeah. Well, he didn't even fall off on the bike, did he? Charlie Morris is now pulling out. What's happening here? Charlie Morris has said enough's enough. I'm not interested anymore. It's a funny time to suddenly decide you don't want to play anymore in the middle of Hall Bends. But something's going well. Maybe he can't see. Is his visor steamed up too much, maybe? He might just be pulling into pit lane. So we've lost the two main men of our championship here in a matter of moments. Oh, no. He's carrying on again. Earth is going on. I'm not sure what he's up to there, Charlie. Well, it leaves a top three of Joey Thompson, James Cowton, and Lloyd Shelley. Then for now, there's Ross Walker, just up ahead of Arnie Shelton, Max Wadsworth. Number tw one two one is James Field of our Royal Air Force riders. And here's your race leader, looking very comfortable, Joe Thompson. Selby on that bid vest Thompson Kawasaki out of the chicane he comes not looking really troubled at this moment in time James Captain in second Lloyd Shelley in third Shelley just closing that gap down slightly now on James Cowan but it doesn't look like he's going to be winning the double oh moment there for Lloyd Shelley foot down on the deck Despite the fact, Sid, that the conditions don't look all that different from earlier, some riders struggling out here. Temperatures, I suppose, 
might be a bit lower than they were earlier. It's, it's hard to say because the sun seems to be gleaming down. It is late in the day, but William White there as well coming through. Don't worry, folks. Sid is still here. He's just got nothing to say. He's just sitting here in the commentary box. Well, I'm still out of falling, breath. Falling asleep. I'm not, I'm, no, not at all. I've just been doing my busy podium things and, uh, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm not a part-timer like you, Steve. <laughs> I haven't gone anywhere, mate. <laughs> I'm still here. I have been since the start of the race. You turn up willy-nilly whenever you want to. Here's William White, number 47. He's going to finish the year in third overall in the championship and overtake Aaron Clifford. Further back, Brendan Mallander's just got past uh, Ross Walker again. Or fallen into the clutches of, shall we say. There is Carrington still then. Lloyd Shelley, can he get himself another podium? He's closed up on James Carrington. It's almost a bit, almost a bit Mick Duanesque, isn't it, his riding style? Has to be said. Looks like he's racing an old 500cc motorcycle, sort of Nor Who was it? He used to, uh, Norik Arbe used to ride a bit like that as well. Number 119. Just tips his bike down, that sort of leads, leaves his body and his head upright sort of really hang off the bike a great deal. Of course, what that will do is mean, it means that he'll be on the fat part of the tyre for the vast majority of a wet race, which is always handy. But it offers a little bit more grip, I guess. Over the top of the hill then for Lloyd Shelley. At the back, here's Jack Tynan coming into the bottom of the mountain. Jack Tynan. Oh, and he's gone down again. Sparks fly. Jack Tynan down in both races, unfortunately. The good news is he's okay. But uh, Sparks really flying up there for Tynan. The bike left in the middle of the circuit. Joe Thompson then comes across the line here. There's not many riders left in this race. We started the weekend off with 28 riders in this class as Lloyd Shelley moves up into second place. How many is that that we've lost now? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven in this race alone. So that actually leads... I think most of them have pulled in, haven't they? There's been a few that have pulled in, but we've had a few fall. Charlie Morris did in the end pull in. Oh, and Shelley's gone off. Shelley's gone off. He will do well to keep that upright. He's just... Yeah, here we go. Oh, he's doing well. I'll tell you what. Fair he play. makes it back onto the circuit. <laughs> he has done an absolutely stunning job there, Lloyd Shelley, because I would have put my house on him chucking it down the road on that because keeping it wound up on the grass like that here Terriers he is like the grass well clearly really well done there from Lloyd Shelley to stay upright under those circumstances unfortunately he just had a bit of a moment and he had no option but to go onto the grass but he has done brilliantly Joe Thompson then but well, he's got no idea what's been going on behind him there's people going off there's people pulling in doesn't really matter to him he deserved this win through Hall Benz, he comes again. Not many laps left for him. I should just point out that uh, we've got to oh, we've got another rider that's pulling in as well at the moment. But there's a lack of adhesion flag there. Here's Lloyd Shelley. Oh, he's down. He's gone down this time. There's no doubt about that. And he's gone for a good slide as well. He sort of just <laughs> he gets up, walks over. It's almost like he's going over to the car park. Bloop, bloop, and undoes the car and away we go on my phone. That's the end of his race. Yellow flags waving over at Barn Corner. We did see a lack of adhesion flag a moment ago, but it doesn't look like there's really too much concern. So that now means that we are left with just 10 riders uh, in this class. Sid, get me the moped. I'm out to pick up some points. To finish first, first you have to finish. And uh, Joey Thompson seems to know how to finish first. Well, no problems for him in these conditions, that's for sure. So, uh, James Captain still in second place. But that now means that William White, I think, is up into third. So, uh, good job from him. Further back, you can see then uh, Max Wadsworth, Ross Walker, Arnie Shelton, Richard Stubbs there. What a bizarre end to the season then in the GB Racing 600 Sportsman Elite class. Here 
Here is James Captain then on that CBR 600, just coming through Mansfield now. So the championship all done and dusted. Who will stand victorious in the final race of the season? There is Joe Thompson. He hasn't looked really perturbed or in any way out of shape throughout this race, despite what's gone on around him. And he's lapping consistently quicker than anyone else. Here is Cowton, who's coming through Hall Benz as well. He's around about, what he's, well, over 10 seconds clear of Cowton now. The last lap flag comes out. Unfortunately, it won't be the thrilling ending that you were hoping for at the end of the uh, 2016 season as the rain starts coming down again here at Cadwell Park. The championship decided in the last race. Thompson and Cowton look like being your men. First and second. Third is going to go to William White. He's a couple of seconds clear of a, a big group of riders, actually, that could fight it out for fourth between Wadsworth, Shelton, Field, Walker and Stubbs. Nice to see uh, Cowton out with us again. Of course, he's took part in a couple of rounds a few years back as well and regularly featured in the top two or three places. Further back there is Arnie Shelton. Then he's got up ahead of Ross Walker. And he's got Max Wadsworth just up ahead of him as well in the closing stages of this one. Coming out of Mansfield and into the chicane. Joe Thompson just got under half a lap left now to take win number two. Really been troubled at all here in this race so far. A good start. Pulled away from the rest of the pack and that's it. The rest is history. Over the top of the mountain into Hall Benz. Checkered flag being made ready. The end of the day here, the end of the season. Joe Thompson's come for a play and has come out trumps. He's uh, just missed out, didn't he, on that win in race one. Lloyd Shelley was in really good shape despite Joe Thompson's uh, mishap. Check a flag comes out there. No need to look over your shoulder. Great win. Joe Thompson clears up here at Cadwell Park in the second GP Racing 600 Sportsman Elite race. He wins by 17 seconds clear of James Cowton. William White was third, ahead of Arnie Shelton, Max Wadsworth, James Field, Ross Walker, Richard Stubbs and Brendan Malander. And there you see on the top step, Joe Thompson. On the left there, James Cowton. On the right, William White. And in the sportsman class, James Field, the winner from Richard Stubbs and Brendan Malander. Quick check on the championship then, confirmation. Charlie Morris wins it, 314 points to Jordan Rushby's 285. William White does take third overall, head of Aaron Clifford with Wadsworth in fifth. And Joe Thompson actually up in sixth in the end. And Charlie Morris wins the sportsman as well, ahead of Brendan Malander, who takes second overall, ahead of Nick Edgeley. Third place, you must be chuffed with that because that was pretty tricky out there, wasn't it? Yeah, it was really hard actually. Um, I struggle in the wet anyway. I haven't got much confidence in the wet and I think that this has definitely helped to make me learn more and hopefully be better in the wet with my confidence. Um, I don't know what sort of happened. I think going from the first race to Merley, which was really tricky in conditions as well, I just tried doing the same thing again and tried to remember my lines breaking points and it just seemed to work and it just shows how good the wets are that the Dunlop wets are really are working um, and I think I just sort of tried focusing and I didn't realise that I was you know staying at steady pace and was fairly up there um, but yeah like I say I want to say thank you to all my family um, you know if it weren't for them I wouldn't be here at all to be honest and yeah my boss is here this weekend as well so it's always good and um yeah there's, i've got a lot of support so if it weren't really really mainly for my family and my mum who does absolutely everything for me so thank you james second place uh, a bit tricky out there but uh well done yeah thank you very much it's uh yeah from the probably second or third lap you know somebody was dropping some fluid and it was really slippy you know a couple tried to come past that to uh, realize that it was slippy as well and run on the grass and whatever so you know just a matter of nursing it around and uh, a bit like the 650 race really you just had to get stuck in and um, grit your teeth and nip your bum and hope for the best but uh, yeah spot on race you know good weekend apart from the weather and yeah spot on thanks well i'll 
in October, I suppose, in England, you know, you can expect that. But uh, people are thanked, mate. Yeah, yeah, you know, my dad and my Neil, Neil my mechanic, um, East Coast Motorcycle World, and, uh, you know, everybody, you know, knocks and... Um, Help performance, you know, everybody who's you know put into this year and and stuck by is whatever you know what's happened. Uh, so yeah, thank you very much to all and uh, spot on meeting. Joey, well, finished the weekend. In fact, our season off with a win. That can't be bad. Yeah, I mean that race was really tricky. I mean, on my first two laps, I thought we were going to crash about ten times. I was out of a seat. Uh, but once I just tried to build a bit of a gap and stay smooth and keep the heat in my tyres and we got about a 10 second lead at one point then got it to 15 and I thought right just calm down Joe just just ride your own race and finish it and yeah it worked Excellent, very well done. And who have you got to thank, mate? Uh, I'd just like to thank all Bidvest, Road and Race, Replicast, my dad, uh, everyone for helping me this weekend, supporting me. Thank you very, very much for everything that you've done. I really appreciate it. Well, don't stay away too long next time, eh? <laughs> thank you very well much. Done. James, well, what a lovely thing to go on with, a win. Yeah, definitely. It's uh, It's been a really hard season. We've had so many mechanicals and uh, crashes and stuff like that, so it's good to finally come away with a good result. Um, swapping from the stock twins on 600 is just quite a big jump but um well, we got there in the end i had no idea i was leading that at any point it was just like oh there's just one in front i need to go after them but no i'm really happy with the result and there's so many people i like to thank i like to thank um, matt kitridge my dad my mum my sister um sponsors uh shape changes of barton and brig um motel hell all the raf guys um their support's been amazing and because I've broken the bike that much, they've really helped out a lot. So thank you very much to everybody. That's it then for 2016. Time to get your jackets on and head home. We'll be back at Brands Hatch in March next year for the start of 17.